Good morning. Welcome to Rendezvous with Alicia, only on Madhouse TV. As I always say on my shows, today is going to be another really great show. We have a WWE Hall of Famer, luscious Johnny Valiant, who is here with the associate producer of the movie The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke, Evan Ginsberg, the agent to the stars, Bobby Rydell, and my co-host from Rendezvous with Chris and Alicia, is that yeah, the name of the show? Yeah, that's on name. <laughs> the Rendezvous Radio Show with Chris and Alicia. My co-host, Chris Melendez, <laughs> also known as DJ Midlife, is here too. So it's going to be a really, really great show. But I wanted to open up and just give thanks. I wanted to say thank you to everybody. Everybody that follows me, everybody that reads my articles, everybody who watches my Madhouse TV show, and now everybody that tunes in to the Rendezvous Radio Show with Chris and Alicia. Because I wouldn't be sitting here, and Chris wouldn't be sitting there, if it weren't for our friends, our family, and our fans. And I just wanted to give a big thank you, tell you all that I love you, and we appreciate everything. I had written a Facebook post the other day that every night when Chris, go home, Chris and I go home, whether there's a book or a poster or artwork or a CD, we, our homes are filling up with all of you and all of your crafts and all stuff that makes you so talented. So we're never alone. We always have a piece of you, and we thank you for everything. And that's it. All right, show's <laughs> over. I wanted yeah. to give a big thank you to everybody. I love them. But now, dun 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 Been a fan for over 20 years of Luscious Johnny Valiant. If anybody knows me, I'm so old school. I love everything from the 80s and the 90s. So having Johnny here is like a blessing to me. So I want to introduce Johnny, Luscious Johnny Valiant. Yes. How are you? How have you been? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Yeah. Now, you know what I want to say? We were talking before. You've known Evan and Bobby for over 20 years, I believe. Or... I'd say they're about you. Yeah. yeah. How did you meet uh, Bobby and Evan? Well, after wrestling, you have to get back into the real world, and you have to uh, encounter other people that uh, perhaps have some of the uh, dreams that I have and, uh, and uh, a little bit of magic here and there, you know. So, uh, yeah, Bobby Rydell, Evan Ginsberg, yeah, I, real close friends of mine. Yeah. How did you start off in WWE? How did I start off in yeah. the WWE? Oh, I don't know. I answered a full page ad in the USA Today. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm 66 now. I guess I started wrestling when I was, uh, I guess, I know I started when I, uh, I was there. Uh, when I was, uh, eh, you know, 20, or 19 years of age, about 20 years of age. Well, you did, uh, you did grow up with... Uh, you went to school with McMahon. Yeah, I went to military school with Vince McMahon, Jr. His dad was a wrestling promoter. And actually, I... Uh, um, did you uh, get so kicked out or something like that? I did, actually. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was asked, that story. I was asked to leave, actually. I, uh, had I known better, I wouldn't, wouldn't have left, but I did. I, uh, I went to military school with Vince, you know. And I, Down in Virginia. We played football together. He wrestled. I played baseball and basketball and all that. But he was primarily a wrestler, amateur wrestler. But my wrestling career didn't start there. Uh, my wrestling career didn't start with McMahon, believe me. Actually, my career started with a guy, uh, you know, the living legend, Bruno San Martino. He had mm -hmm. moved um, unbeknownst to a lot of people, you know, although I wrestled him in Madison Square Garden and all. But, you know, he is one of the ones that started yours truly here in wrestling. He and the original Sheik, who, of course, is deceased, Eddie Farhat, from up in Williamston, Michigan. I started out setting up the rings and refereeing and whatnot, and uh, as I alluded to, Bruno had, had moved a couple streets, ironically, from me in Pittsburgh. And uh, I, I took the, the, I gussied up enough uh, courage to go and, and knock on his door. And, of course, he was on the road all the time, so eventually when he did come back on a Sunday, his wife said that, uh, you know, my husband will be home. You can stop in again if you like. And uh, right then and there, you know, when he answered the door, uh, actually my life changed a lot right then and there. Because, you know, I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, and the viewing audience there and you fellows here in the set know that, uh, you know, at a certain time, you know, Bruno was like, you know, Mickey Mantle of uh, baseball, only a professional wrestling. I, I believe, uh, as you all know, that he was just inducted into the uh, Hall of Fame here in the WWE. And I, of course, uh, ingratiated myself with him. You know, I was a young kid. I was in my teens. I just got out of the Marines. And uh, 
you know, I uh, let him know that I wanted to be a wrestler and if he could help me and whatnot. So he, you know, wrote a little letter as to me what to do, you know, how to work out and all this stuff. And uh, that's what I did. And it, although it sounds very simplistic, it wasn't. But, it, you know, to be a professional wrestler, you know, you just don't, you know, go to the gym and lift weights and all of a sudden you're a wrestler. It takes uh, so many years. And I uh, started out refereeing and setting up the rings and traveling all over Tennessee and all these little towns and making little or no money. And I mean very little or no money. And it was just blind ambition, one foot in front of the other. And, you know, back in the day, we had territories all over the United States. And uh, that's where I, I went. You know, as unfortunate as it is now for young fellas starting out or girls in wrestling, you know, there's really no real place to go. Back in my day, in the, in the late 60s that I started, there was like territories to go to. And that's where I just bounced around from territory to territory. Then after about, I think about 10 years, I uh, hooked up, literally, with uh, Jimmy Valiant. And my name, of course, is Thomas Sullivan, my real name. And I was wrestling as Johnny Sullivan, John L. Sullivan and all. And um, they put me, uh, Dick the Bruiser gave me my break after about 10 years. He thought that I would do well with uh, Jimmy Valiant, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Bobby Heenan saw me up in, uh, up in Canada wrestling. And spoke to Dick the Bruiser and they, they put us together and we did quite well back in Chicago and uh, in fact we beat San Martino and Dick the Bruiser for the title over at the old Chicago Amphitheater and back in the day there was no you know like there is now there was only wrestling magazines that people could know results and whatnot so we were pre-cell phone pre-internet uh, type existence you know so yeah, but you may have you may say that you were pre, but I think you were actually ahead of the game because when I remember wrestling back in the day, to me when I see all the reality TV yeah. shows now, I feel you were the start of reality TV because it <laughs> wasn't just a match. I mean, I remember watching TV and there'd be like a little three minute clip and who's fighting with who and and who's you know you got um, a sneak preview of what was going on. You were taking cooking classes. Who's over here? Who's over there? You guys were all over the map, and I, I honestly believe you were the first generation of reality TV. Even though the wrestling was real, there was so much comedy outside of the ring that it was, it was almost, um, uh, como se dice, the word I'm looking for, and, and, and not an epidemic, it, not an epidemic. Um, <laughs> It was, well, it was, um, let me, let I don't know, let it was me, something, I can't think of the word. I, <laughs> let me see if I can save you here a second. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, no, I'm just being facetious. Save me, please, I'm save me. Facetious. No, my, I have a facetious, in fact, it's double parked outside. <laughs> <laughs> Put some money in the meter. But I, um, you know, it's, it's funny as I digress here, you know, it's, it's somebody, it's such a, <laughs> it's so crazy, somebody that's interested, uh, and I assume the, the viewing audience is interested or else they would have you know, turned us off by now, but obviously this is your show, you're doing quite well, and it's my pleasure to be here, really, and I uh, thank you for having me here, I should have said that initially, but I will go on record now and say that, that, uh, you know, you have to first, like in anything else in life, you have to have it in the heart first, and then the brain is second. I obviously, as a young kid growing, you can tell I'm, I'm not a native New Yorker, I'm from western Pennsylvania, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania as I stated earlier. And that's why you'll, you'll get a little bit of that Western Pennsylvania accent, their regional accent that I th f still feel that I possess. And having uh, credited uh, San Martino for starting me in the business, and he, um, he took me kind of under his wing. He was more or less like we call a mentor, something that uh, people do need, obviously, in life, whether it's in show business. You know, it doesn't hurt to have a mentor. It doesn't hurt to have one perhaps in medicine or in law or in law enforcement. Um, if a person's lucky enough to have somebody that takes some interest in them that knows what's happening and if you're lucky if they have connections or whatnot, you'd be surprised how your, how your career can take off. So after about 10 years of putting in a, you know, an, an apprenticeship of wrestling, in doing what? It's much like I'm doing now. You know, talking in front of a camera, wrestling in front of a camera, in front of a, a legion of people, thousands of people. Because you can go and wrestle and get thrown around in a, in a gym, it means nothing. But when you have a live audience out there, and then you learn how to control that audience, and then when you're like, quote, unquote, the bad guy, the villain, they are the ones that in a professional match, these are the ones that lay the groundwork for what's to follow. So 
you know, that, that's... That's interesting you said that. I was going to ask you. How, how did you develop that character of Luscious? It came, it came uh, you know, it came... Uh, when I first uh, uh, was put with Jimmy Valiant up in Chicago, we had a guy, Bob Luce, who was a real innovator, and he was a, a regional promoter. And he started at the WGN Studios up in Chicago. And I came in, and this Jimmy Valiant was already established, and I came in as his brother, luscious Johnny Valiant. And all of a sudden, there I was, you know, with the long bleached blonde hair, and they had girls hanging around, you know, and they had, uh, you know, roses and all this stuff, making a big to-do of things. And it just, it, you know, uh, it just, it didn't, like anything else, things just don't happen. It, you cultivate it over a period of years. And you add this, and you see what works, and see what doesn't work, and much like I'm doing now. And um, gosh, you know, Jimmy Valiant was such a great partner. And of course, we wrestled a lot of guys that were already what we call over. Not only Bruno San Martino. I'm talking Dick the Bruiser, the Crusher. I'm talking Andre the Giant, Moose Cholak, uh, Wilbur Snyder. All these guys. Uh, and then when I used to travel a lot with Killer Kowalski and Taro Tanaka and all these other cats, you know, that were real name villains, you know, they, and Baron Cicluna, they, they would teach me a lot too, just because we traveled by cars in those days, you know, and man, you'd sit there, it's like, it's like traveling with, with Jerry Lewis, you know, and, you know, learning comedy or whatnot, you know, you, you may have the, the comedy um, um, vibes, and you may be humorous, but, you know, to be humorous and funny on purpose is something that a lot of people can't do, um, so... <laughs> Johnny, what's it like when you first look across the ring in a sold-out arena, and there's Bruno or Dick the Bruiser, your mm. mentors, and you're yeah. facing them? What, what does that feel like? It, it's, it's, gratifi it's gratifying, Evan, but it, 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 um, it kind of told me that I belong here because I worked so hard to get there. And you know something? Uh, I'll tell you something. You talk fame and fortune. I don't really think I had a lot of fame. I don't... Most assuredly, no, I didn't have a lot of fortune. Then again, I was never in it for the money. I was in it uh, just to do it because that's the true payoff in life is doing things that you like to do. And then if you happen to be pretty good at it and you still have your ears open and you take uh, direction from things and you say, oh, I, I did this wrong or I could have done this better, knowing full well that you're never going to reach perfection, but you're working at the craft. And... Uh, when I would see Sam Martino there, or much like Andre the Giant, or these other these other people, you know, I, I, or Dick the Bruiser, I would uh, say, "Wow, these guys are already big names." And I'm saying, "Wow, I'm in here with them." So I'm saying, "Wow, people actually think that I can hurt this guy." So it was it was kind of yeah that way. It was kind of strange. Uh, of course, you know, it affects your family in, in in different ways. You know, when you're on television, being the bad guy, you know. Well, long blonde hair and sunglasses and a fancy jacket, and then all of a sudden they see you maybe, you know, at a mall or sitting there having dinner with your, your boys and, and your children, you know, and somebody comes up to you, hey, you're not so tough, or let's see how tough you are now. You, you have to be very, dis, uh, have some discretion about you, you know. You, you have to look at the big picture. You don't, you, I never wanted to paint any kind of a picture that I was anything special in front of my kids. I, I really didn't like that. I always wanted them just to see me as dad. I did not ever want them to see me as a wrestler. But that's why I would put a baseball cap on or something and try to, try to hide. You know, it's, it's, it's funny. Uh, life is funny. Uh, you know, you, you get to a certain level, you know, uh, in, in life, and then you'd be surprised, you know. You work your way down, too. And... Um, and what happens to you psychologically is you put yourself out there and you're vulnerable, you know. You're very vulnerable uh, as, as an athlete. You're very, as, as a pro wrestler. It's not a team effort, you know. It's not like 11 guys. It's not like nine guys, you know. It's you're out there by yourself. And as a wrestler, you don't have a football helmet on or shoulder pads or anything. And you get hurt. You do get hurt. Quite, quite often you get hurt very bad. And, but you find yourself... Uh, you know, on the road, uh, 30 days of the year and wrestling 29 or 30 of them night after night, you know, you can, it takes its toll on you. Yeah, do you guys have like some sort of like insurance plan or something like no, that while you're wrestling? No, never did. No. Never did? No, never That's did. Incredible. Yeah, I never did. I, 
I remember Chief Jay Strongbow, uh, who I wrestled a lot too, he used to tell me he, he tries to always do the least as possible, but with, with the most results. And I learned that from him. And once you do get hurt, your back, your knees, whatnot, your neck, mm, you have to make different uh, um, um, adjustments towards, a, towards, a, towards your uh, matches and whatnot. It's survival, you know? We have to, well, we're gonna, we have to cut to a commercial now. We are going to cut to a commercial now, obviously. <laughs> when we come back, I have a, a phenomenal video clip of Johnny Valiant, luscious Johnny Valiant, from back in the day that I know that you're all going to love, and you're going to see a description of the way he's describing his long hair and his headband, and the Brutus Beefcake is in it, and I think Lou Albano. You're really going to enjoy it. But for now, enjoy the commercials, and when we come back, we have a special surprise guest that's going to join the panel, all the way from Scarsdale. Hey, I'm Tom Mealy. I'm with Madhouse TV. This guy just walked up the steps. I don't know. What, the, what, what is the story with you? I'm Come comedian on. Frank Prince. Hey, what the hell do you want here? I want my own reality TV show. You think you're funny enough? Hell yeah. Well, how much money you got? Short arms and deep pockets. You think you can make it? I'm the Myron J. Show. You think? I think. All right. I know. We're going to give him a shot this spring here on Madhouse TV. Tune in and wait for... Frank Prince, the Myron J. Show. There you go. We'll see you this spring. We've got a ton of new shows coming up. My pal Frank Prince, great comedian. Wait to see him. Tune in to Madhouse TV this spring. Have a wonderful day. Brooklyn's best locks, McKen Hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, Fire rated from a half hour to two hours. Famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's best, Locksmith and Hardware. Right, Lockie? That's right, Alan. You know you already want a Toyota, but when you want more from your Toyota store, you want Smithtown Toyota, where every Toyota comes with Smithtown Toyota's Toyota for Life program, giving you lifetime New York State inspections, lifetime 10% discounts on all parts and service, two years of complimentary oil changes, two years of scheduled maintenance, and more, all at no cost to you, plus low clear-out deals on every Toyota in stock. Get more from your Toyota store. Hurry to Smithtown Toyota. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Welcome back to Rendezvous with Alicia. I wish you all could be here during that commercial break because Chris, Bobby, and Evan have so much knowledge on wrestling. So we've just been talking, sharing stories of the past, and really enjoying each other's company. But right now we're going to clip to a... can't see tonight. We're going to cut to a wrestling clip of Johnny Valiant and um, enjoy. Do we have that wrestling clip? Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, I see you finally dried off, not cute, out. real yeah. cute. Let me tell you something, baby. He who laughs last will laugh the loudest, and I promise you this, junkyard dog. I will stand over your body after Greg the Hammer Valentine humiliates you in the middle of the ring in Oakland. I will have the last laugh. You understand that? <laughs> All right, Intercontinental Champ, Greg the Hammer Valentine, your thoughts? Well, I'll tell you what everybody says, that junkyard dog is in for a big surprise. But it's not too big of a surprise, junkyard dog, if you go and talk to Tito Santana. If you go talk to the other thousands of professional wrestlers that have done me wrong and then ask them what happened. Valentine put them out of professional wrestling. Number one on the hated list because they used to call me the Eliminator. The what? The Eliminator. 
Junkyard dog, that's right. You are looking at the man that puts people out of professional wrestling. And I've been looking at you out there shucking and jiving. You think you're hot stuff. Ever since you came for professional wrestling, oh yeah, Mr. Cool, you've had an easy road, man, but you haven't ran into the hammer. And you're gonna run into the hammer, and you're gonna pay the price right here in Penny Waste, capital of the world, San Francisco. Oh, gentlemen, please, a little decorum. Greg the Hammer Valentine to defend against Junkyard Dog for the Intercontinental Battle. It's all coming to a screech and help. Hey, welcome back to the Bay Area. You don't have to welcome me. You don't have to say anything. I want everybody just to book up and hook up and listen to JV, what he's talking about right now. There's a man coming into the picture right here in the Bay Area that's coming home for the first time as a legitimate challenger for the WWF title. Hulk Hogan, when that plane takes off to take you to Venice Beach or whatever kind of a part of the world where you're going to put your head in shame after you've lost at the hands of Brutus Beefcake. This Monday night, my dear old friend Hulk Hogan, it's all coming to a screeching halt. And when the smoke clears in Oakland, right here is the man that's going to emerge victorious and take your title this Monday night. So Hulk Hogan, you show up. We've got plans for you. All right, <laughs> Brutus Beefcake, plans. welcome back home. We're coming home, baby, we're coming home. And we want to bring the belt home too you understand Bye. and we will not stop at anything it's i, I kind of got that it's impression. coming <laughs> to the city <laughs> by the bay oh, God i <laughs> got a job oh, to do here baby this, this Monday night, Sunday so night Hogan, bring it here You know you already want a Toyota, but when you want more from your Toyota store, you want Smithtown Toyota, where every Toyota comes with Smithtown Toyota's Toyota for Life program, giving you lifetime New York State inspections, lifetime 10% discounts on all parts and service, two years of complimentary oil changes, two years of scheduled maintenance, and more, all at no cost to you, plus low clear-out deals on every Toyota in stock. Get more from your Toyota store. Hurry to Smithtown Toyota. Welcome back to Madhouse TV. Today we got luscious Johnny Valiant, Paulie Cigars in the house, and we have an announcement to make. I think we're going to be doing a show called The Crew with me, Nora Swice, and Squiggy himself. Coming soon, live light on Friday's broadcast. Just put this together with Tommy Madhouse. So, you know, I didn't want to tell you about it because I wanted to see your face when I said it. That's awesome. And I think Alicia should be a weekly weekly guests as well so oh, we're here with but enough about me back to luscious Johnny V so Johnny V where do we leave off or where do we begin well you know I've been left off m most of my life but uh, um, I'll tell you something funny you should ask I uh, I uh, you know at 66 years of age uh, people ask me you know do I still watch wrestling am I still involved in it and uh, the answer is no <laughs> Uh, and also the answer is yes, because you see, in life, every painter knows basically when the picture's finished. And there's nothing that I miss about the, the wrestling business at all. And I can honestly say that with a true and kind heart. And, uh, you know, it's, it's time to, for a person to, and I did this over 20 years ago, to go on with my life. And I, I thank you for your kind words and, the, and, the, and the, your staff here, uh, um, uh, people saying that uh, I remember Johnny and all that. It's nice, but don't forget, it was when you were younger, too, and stuff. Life was a little bit different, a little bit more of an impressionable, uh, and I was much younger, too. And, uh, you know, maybe I blazed the trails here and there. And I, now and then, I, 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 I used to go down to the garden, you know, and, and see... Uh, one or two of the guys, perhaps maybe a Tony Guerrero and even Vince McMahon Jr. that I would, uh, but they're all quite busy down there. And I was busy too. In fact, you know something, uh, when it comes down to it, life goes on and I, I, I don't mind going on with it. You know, I, I'm a big sports fan. You know, I, I always liked the Broadway Joe Namath, you know, with the Jets and of course, you know, 
New Yorkers, you know, they're all big fans of Joe Namath, but he's a Pittsburgher. He's from Western Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And uh, that man's gone on with his life. But I used to like to listen to him, you know, commenting about the current New York Jets and whatnot, the quarterback situation, the coaching situation. And his input always and still does mean a lot. My input with wrestling is always on a private level because I, I really don't seek out, and I, I'm not on television, I'm not on radio. I don't have a column, you know, in the, in the daily news or whatnot, nor do I want to. But I have opinions about it. I, one thing that I have to say wholeheartedly is that the message out there for the youth um, is that, uh, you know, you kind of, anything I ever did in the wrestling business, I, I always thought, I kind of think it was well intended. I never wanted to go down a path of, uh, you know, something that was morally offensive or, or whatnot. You know, if I was making an ass of myself, that's quite all right. But I, I didn't want to uh, let the young or the viewing audience in any way uh, think that I'm misleading them by, uh, you know, betraying myself as a man, you know, or whatnot, because it's all done in good taste. So it's all about entertainment, man. That's, mm -hmm. that's really where it's at, you know, because uh, today, you know, people, uh, they have so many choices, you know, they, 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 you know, hundreds of channels. So I guess this WWE, they have to be doing something good because they have such a legion of fans. Although there is a certain percentage of people, probably over 40, over 50, most assuredly my age, over 60, that certainly don't watch it. But you know something, if you, if you do a test and a survey, there's a lot of people that watch golf. They watch tennis that are senior citizens that watch certainly baseball and football and basketball and hockey and everything. But wrestling, eh, they, they're kind of turned off by it. Why? I don't know. I mean, I uh, could care less, too, actually. So what are you doing with your This is turning into a public service message. <laughs> What's that? What are you doing know. if you... None of your business. I was about to go to service. What am I doing? I thought I started to feel bad about myself after you... listening to that message. Yeah, yeah. No, was... seriously. No, I, what do I do? I, I don't know. Who knows? You know, I, I got a Chinese wife, you know, I got this is a second marriage, you know, that's okay. First wife, first wife, that was the toughest match I ever had was uh, that tag match, her and her attorney, you know. So that was, uh, <laughs> I got over that. No, that's over 20 years ago. I, I was living the life of a single guy here in Manhattan. You know, I had a real small room, man. You know, I moved from Pittsburgh for the acting profession. And, uh, you know, I'd go on my auditions, man. I was living on 51st Street in the west side. I had an 8 by 10 room, man, I was hanging out in, you know. And, I'd go out and make the rounds as we do as an actor, knocking on the doors, get that head shot around there. And, uh, you know, the room was so small, I had to go out in the hallway to change my mind, for God's sake, you know. And, uh, but, uh, no, I was introduced to this, uh, my wife, her name's Yumei, Y-O-U-M-E-I, don't get any ideas. And, um, no, I want a blind date. And uh, down in Chinatown, you imagine going on a blind date with a, a Chinese girl in Chinatown? No, okay. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, we've been married eight years, and, uh, you know, when I was first introduced to my wife, uh, Ron Wall, the late Ron Wall, nice fellow, we just had a testimony for uh, Ronnie Wall here in New York, uh, actually a few days ago, and uh, he asked me if I wanted to meet uh, a, a, a lady, a young lady, I said, Ron, come on, she, well, she's Chinese, I said, come on, Rod, you know, I'm German, Irish, and stuff, I like Italian women, you know. But look, you know, well, I know she's nice. Okay, they're all nice at the beginning. Yeah, everybody's nice. They're all well-intended. I said, I'll, I'll go out with her one time. So I did. We went out, and it was a blind date. You know, she had a C&I dog with a cane. No. And, and we just, didn't, you know, kind of hit it off. And, you know, she's on the short side, you know, and I'm just dancing with her. You know, the music was playing. I said, look, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm an actor. You know, I don't make any money. You know, I have two kids that are raised. You know, I used to be a wrestler, blah, blah, blah. And uh, music stopped. She's looking up at me. I'm looking down at her, and I can see she doesn't understand a damn word I said. I said, perfect. <laughs> so she was speaking about, what, four or five words at the time? Now she's up to about eight. Wow. So, yeah, she's all right. Well, at least my, you know, my laundry's clean. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she's a, a fanatic, you know, always this. you got to take the shoes off. Even out in the street, you got to walk around. And... Uh, you know, I go to bed early, man, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, you know, and she goes to the senior center and plays ping pong and some Tai Chi, and I'm over there, you know, whacking out the beer in the apartment and stuff, you know, listen to what talk show. I go to bed 7, 8 o'clock at night. I love a very exciting life, believe me. 
Sometimes I get up at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, i got some screwball lives downstairs walking around with, with high heels, and I think that's not bad, except the guy's a truck driver, <laughs> you know? And uh, so that's not, you know, and then these guys got some kind of incessive cough, you know? I don't, I don't know if this guy's got tuberculosis or what, you know? And uh, then they get, for, for no reason, this guy, <laughs> and that's it, one laugh. I don't know. So uh, I don't know if he makes uh, you know dirty phone calls to himself and goes to sleep. I, I don't know, man. And uh, but the work, it's working out fine. So my life is nothing to do with wrestling. Thank goodness, you know, nothing to do with it. I don't depend on anybody. I don't solicit. Oh, oh, when's Vinny gonna call me? You know, nothing, nothing like this. One time uh, they have called me up and it, because with their wrestling hall of fame, they, they put me in the hall of fame 1996. Okay, big deal. I'm in the wrestling hall of fame with them. And they called me up not long ago. They want to know, do I want to donate some of my jackets or whatever? I says, look, my stuff's in the Smithsonian Institute, for God's <laughs> sakes. I said, look, and, but we can't pay you for it, they said. We, you can't pay me for it? you got enough, you know, for Vince's wife to go for the senator, though. you got money for that, right? But you, you can't give me 1995. I'll make, get out of here. I don't want to give it. That's my property. Some things in life, I'm starting to get into it now. Yeah. Some things in life just aren't for sale. And I happened to be one of them. So I told Howard Finkel, the guy that called up from the office. We all know Howard Finkel. Nice guy. He used to rip tickets over at the Hartford Civic Center. Come on. No. <laughs> it's true. And uh, uh, I said, Howard, you ever see a post with a turtle on top of it? And he says, what, Johnny? What? I says, a post with a turtle on top of it. He said, what do you mean? I said, you think the turtle got there by himself? <laughs> and uh, he, I said, it's like 20,000 feet over Denver. In other words, you know, some people were figured in, others aren't. You know, but that's okay. I got the guy downstairs. I got the Chinese wife. I don't care no more. You understand? I got enough stuff like that on my mind. Yeah. So do you have any resentment? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, please. So, um, resentment. Yeah. Not many people may know that you had yeah. a very successful uh, comedy run doing oh. comedy, but you also had your one-man show yeah. that Evan helped uh, put yeah. together and that's produce. Right. He had to... He had to are you great? Audacity enough to do this. Yeah. Listen, I saw it. And mm. It was it was fantastic. It was but, really, really. I'm not just you. saying that. It was it was really an unbelievable event. Yeah. But um, I'd like to bring it actually to the church. But um, my question to you would be: Do you feel that wrestling has hurt you as far as getting into more acting roles, or has helped you? Um, it hasn't helped ever. There was never anything that I auditioned for. In fact, you know, uh, because of wrestling, one time. They, they did the movie, I forget the name of it, they solicited me, they had me come in and teach this kid a sleeper hold, Adam Sandler, for this movie. And uh, I had never met Adam Sandler, a very talented, we know, actor, and a very, you know, leading man, a, a comedian as well. And uh, I met with the director and Adam Sandler, and he says, Johnny, we understand you were uh, you're a wrestler, and I said, yeah, he says, could you teach us you know, what they call the sleeper hold? I said, the sleeper hold? I said, I don't know. I said, I was always like in the sleeper hold. I said, the <laughs> guy put it on me. The Chief J. Strongbow put this sleeper hold on me. They just started laughing. I said, no, seriously. I, I was the guy in the sleeper hold. And they says, well, can you kind of reverse this so like you could like put the hold on? How do you do this? And I says, well, I don't really don't know legitimately how you do it. But the sleeper hold is... You know, there's a lot of insomniacs out there going, I, I, I can relate to that. <laughs> but there's, there's, the sleeper hold is, is, is something that you'd actually cut off the blood flow. Uh, uh, Vern Gagne, the AWA champion, uh, he used to put guys out like this out of the audience with the sleeper hold. So I showed this Adam Slander, uh, Sandler the, the sleeper hold, and, yeah. you know, and he laughed himself through it and whatnot, and they dismissed me and all. And I said, okay, thank you. And they, you know, that I, they, I got paid not a lot of money to do that, but, uh, you know, I had... I had dinner, and uh, and I went back to that room, that eight by ten room, and uh, it it was really really gratifying to, to to be on the set. And for one time, I think it was that anything wrestling is because of what I was in the business. Mm -hmm. Now I did a lot of Law and Orders, I did a lot of Sopranos, I did a lot of this stuff. Believe me, because I'm German Irish, it's kind of funny with the salt and pepper hair, which is all now. You know, you can see what it is. When you put a black suit on me and a tie and stuff, you know, I look like, hey, Mary, hey, Mary. You know, that's what it is. And, uh, uh, man, I'd see fight scenes and stuff, and I'd see from afar. I'd just sit back there and watch these guys, stunt coordinators, they call them, stunt coordinator. He would do the show the punch doing this and, and doing that. And I says, oh, that's nice. I said, he's not doing as, as, as best as he could teach them to do that. 
but I, you know, you don't uh, you step on the toes, you know. So, I, okay, you know, I'm not going to offer anything, you know. They did the Spider-Man movie one time, and they were looking for a wrestler. And I went over to the director, Sam Raimi, once and said, I said, guys, go tell him who you are. Go tell yeah. him that you were, you know. I said, I can't go up to Johnny. Go do it. He's, I said, go. oh, hi, Sam. How you doing? So for a second, he said, all right. I, you know, he says, I, he said, can I help you? I said, yeah, I'm Johnny Valiant. You know, I'm one of the wrestlers. I said, you know, he said, oh, congratulations. <laughs> and, and he just walked. <laughs> wow. The, the case in point, <laughs> the case in point is that you don't want to toot your own horn, you know, man. You, know, you have an agent, you have a manager do things for you. But, you know, sometimes things come up, you know. But to answer your question, no, I, I never, nothing ever really ever, uh, not yet. You can't say forever, but you never know. What did you do on The uh, Sopranos? Huh? What would you do on The Sopranos? I was always a guy uh, with the Tony Lip. I was always uh, one of his, like, mob, mob guys. Okay. Just much like you're there with the cigar, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. And okay. I was dressed somewhat okay. like you. In <laughs> fact, you were, you were the guy. I knew I knew you from someplace. I knew I knew from someplace. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got that fight I was you on? Yeah. But that's what I did. I did a lot of that with James Gandolfini, who's a real nice fellow and a great, great actor. And uh, so I did a lot of Sopranos, Criminal Intense, things like that. And, well. I'm still here. Who knows? Do you like speaking about wrestling? Or is it a boring subject for you? Do you get it tired if a guy comes up to you and wants to talk about the subject? No, because they always did on the set. Always. Yeah. Once they found out that that's what I used you to do. You got to get into the stories or does it get oh, yeah. for you? Believe me. They just come like this, these, these different stories. Like, you know, sharing a hotel room with Andre the Giant. Okay. What about a book? Come on. A book? Good. You got a good team right there. You got I great know. stories from a great era. Yeah, I know. I should. But after a commercial, I want to come back and talk about... Andre the Giant. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we are going to cut to a commercial. When we come back, we're going to banter a little more and enjoy our special guest, Luscious Johnny Valiant. So enjoy our sponsor. You know you already want a Toyota, but when you want more from your Toyota store, you want Smithtown Toyota, where every Toyota comes with Smithtown Toyota's Toyota for Life program, giving you lifetime New York State inspections, lifetime 10% discounts on all parts and service, two years of complimentary oil changes, two years of scheduled maintenance, and more, all at no cost to you, plus low clear-out deals on every Toyota in stock. Get more from your Toyota store. Hurry to Smithtown Toyota. Old Spice Body Spray will make you feel so powerful to blow your mind right in front of your face! Goodbye. Oh no! Goodbye, Kyle. I don't. Power! Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer and I never have to remember. Oh! Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful, it sells itself in other people's commercials. You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power. Yeah, I do. <laughs> power! Ba -ba 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 power! Oh! Try this routine to feel fresh and clean. Pair Charmin Fresh Mates with your Charmin. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray is too powerful to stay in its own commercial! That's right. Ba -ba 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 power! Whoa. Whoa. Old Spice Body Spray can change a regular smelling man into a man who smells like power! Now, how is this? Ah! Wow, you know what? I actually do feel more power. Potato chip! It's me.
Hey, I'm Tom Mealy. I'm with Madhouse TV. This guy just walked up the steps. I don't know. What the, what, what is the story with you? I'm Who comedian Frank Prince. Hey, what the hell do you want here? I want my own reality TV show. You think you're funny enough? Hell yeah. Well, how much money you got? Short arms and deep pockets. You think you can make it? I'm the Marvin J Show. You think? I think. All right. I know. We're going to give him a shot this spring here on Madhouse TV. Tune in and wait for... Frank Prince, the Myron J Show. There you go. We'll see you this spring. We've got a ton of new shows coming up. My pal Frank Prince, great comedian. Wait to see him. Tune in to Madhouse TV this spring. Have a wonderful day. Uh, hmm. uh, Ray, I don't know. Are you sure clicking this thing will get us online? Well, try dragging it. Mm. Faster. <laughs> You're just a mouse click away from a better way to rent movies. Blockbuster Total Access. Movies through the mail plus movies through the store. One low price. Here's the problem. We forgot to plug it in. Oh, don't even think about it. Get a free trial at your Blockbuster store or Blockbuster.com. So I'm going to actually throw the camera over to Evan Ginsberg. Evan Ginsberg is the associate producer of the movie The Wrestler, which featured Mickey Rourke. And I believe Luscious Johnny Dalian might have been in that movie. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. so Evan, how did you become the associate producer of that movie, and how did you meet Luscious Johnny Dalian? <laughs> well, I was uh, acting as an agent for Johnny, and we were at an autograph uh, signing with Johnny and Nikolai when the... Uh, the executive producer, Scott Franklin, his buddy turned up at this um, autograph signing and we exchanged, you know, information and before we knew it, I was sitting with Johnny and Nikolai and the late great Tiger Khan and uh, we were having a meeting and uh, Nikita Brezhnikov, who's an actor now, we were all meeting with Aronofsky and Scott Franklin and uh, next thing we knew, we were all involved with this major project and uh, you know, Johnny's done tons of acting, and he's taken his one-man show all around the country, and the Village Voice and others have really, you know, raved about it. So maybe Johnny could give us a little taste of the show. I'd love that. Well, you know, one thing that I, uh, yeah, thank you. I, I, I'm not, I know that Aronofsky, he came down to see, uh, to see my uh, performance uh, down in the Village, and, um, uh, you know, of course, I, I've heard of Darren Aronofsky and, uh, you know, director of you know, Requiem for a Dream, is that right? right? Yeah. And Pie and whatnot, but, um, yeah, you know, nice, nice fellow, very approachable, and uh, I guess he was kind of intrigued, you know, about the profession, because when I do my show, I, I allude to the fact of uh, what life's like, you know, the trip up, the trip down, what it's like, and uh, being a wrestler, and perhaps what it's like to not being a wrestler. Um, when one puts so much of one's uh, life into something, and then it's just like uh, it's not there anymore. It, it's it's uh, it's 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 kind of a happening, you know. I give the people a, a peek behind the curtain, let them see a real person up on the stage, not not just a buffoon or or somebody that has an over absorbed uh, persona deficiency or whatnot. That that they they think that uh, you know there's no life after wrestling. But uh, Aronofsky picked up on it, and I think he took the theatrical license to. Um, to take and stretch it. Was it Mark Twain that once says, once you establish the facts, you can you can stretch the truth as far as far as you want to go, you know? And I believe uh, in, in the movie, The Wrestler, he did that very thing. You know, when I said, Evan, that I, you know, with Andre the Giant, I, 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 I don't say this in my show, but, you know, this guy, Andre the Giant, seven foot four, 565 pounds, you know, I shared a hotel room with this guy once. And I'm here to tell you, there was no rooms. We were at the Marriott Marquis. And uh, oh, his voice like this, when we were playing cards and whatnot. And um, he started to take off his shirt. And you know, I'm like, okay. And we you know, had a few drinks and whatnot. You know, we're adults. You know, the guy, room service. And, and then, you know, I said, well, I said, where are you going? I says, well, I think I'm just going to probably head on down the lobby. Oh, no, no. So he... He put the latch on the door, you know, <laughs> and I, I, I'm like, well, 
Uh, I'm gonna go just go take a little nap. I said, well, I'll probably head on and see if I can get the Met score. What? You're like right there, you don't go nowhere. Go nowhere? You don't go nowhere, you know. <laughs> so this guy, you know, he takes off his shirt, you know, and he takes off his slacks. I'm looking at this guy, man, you know. And, but this guy's basically nude, you know, and, and I'm in a room with this giant, man. I'm like, this guy's 565 pounds. I don't know, man. You ever been in a room with a naked giant? Man? <laughs> and then the guy, <laughs> he's laying in bed, man. I'm looking like this. This guy, man, he's like, hey, I'm lonely. I said, lonely? That's the two scariest words I ever heard with a naked giant in a <laughs> hotel. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> okay, let's go back and play. Play more cards. I said, okay, but you can put your clothes on for God's sake. Uh, you know how I feel better. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, that was you know. So we lived together for good. No, I lived. Yeah. <laughs> that was an experience. You know, a lot of the wrestlers, believe me, because back in the day, man, we we traveled. I mean, I'd share hotel rooms with these guys all the time. One time, I, I hey look, man, one time I, I had long blonde hair. Okay, long blonde hair. And I'll never forget, I don't mind, oh, my knee. I wouldn't even mind telling you the guy's name, Tony Marino, nice Italian guy, okay? I'm in Philadelphia, lying in bed during the middle of the night, and I have my long hair. This guy climbs in bed with me, man, <laughs> and starts caressing me and all this stuff. I'm like, whoa, man, you know, four in the morning. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, oh, Johnny, I'm sorry. He said, he said I, th I thought I was home. I thought you were my wife. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't tell the guys. I said, don't worry about it. I'm not going to tell nobody. <laughs> Well, now you for can today. See the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, wait a minute. Yeah, cut the tape. <laughs> Who did you travel with back in the anybody uh, had a car with gas? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, back in the day, we used to spend two cents a mile transportation. Yeah. Imagine now, if you with the gas situation oh, now, it. you'd be about, about five cents. You know. But uh, no, that's what we did, man. You know, you would. Uh, we used to go two thousand miles a week in a car. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I'd be down there. In fact, one time with Sputnik Monroe mm. down in uh, Tennessee. You know, I asked him, this guy, you know, wild guy, you know, I says, hey, uh, can I get a ride with you tonight? Yeah, but kid, look, let me tell you something. After the matches, he says, I don't go, I don't screw around. I go right home. It's express. I said, okay, okay. I stop for beer and that's it, kid. I said, all right. So we go down there and he wrestles. I wrestle. Come on, we're going to go. I think I'm going to go back to Atlanta. So we go back to Atlanta. Okay, good. So this stuff, I gotta, you want beer, kid? I said, yeah, I like beer. So I got two six pack. This guy got a case of beer, right? So we're going down to Ross. Excuse me, I says uh, Sputnik. I got I gotta go relieve myself on the highway. Ah, oh, come on, kid! I told you this is express. I don't uh, stop for nobody. Go ahead, quick. So I do, and then another hundred miles later. Oh, I got ten. I said, yeah. So I did this. Meanwhile, we get back to Atlanta, man. You know, and uh, I'm saying to myself, uh, I paid him the money that I owed him, two cents a mile. I said, hey, Sputnik. Said, yeah, kid, come on, hurry up! I got the strip show for the strip show closes. I said, uh, can I ask you a stupid question? Yeah, well. I said, how come, you know, I uh, I stopped about two, three times. I said, and I drank a six-pack or two. I said, you drank a case, and you didn't stop one time. He says, hell, I've got time for that. I said, where, where do you go? I go right here, man. You kidding? Oh, my goodness. I said, oh, that's what I said. I'm like, <laughs> I said, you go right there, and, and you're, and, no. He said, yeah. I said, oh, shit, I thought it was a, tra thought it was a transmission leak. <laughs> <laughs> True. Wow. Now, there was guys that uh, when you would travel with them, some guys had vans, you know, and, you know, other guys would, uh, you know, other ones had Oldsmobiles, you know, Cadillacs. Other guys would uh, have a, a, a car that you had to put in uh, oil every hundred miles, you know. And, uh, but, yeah, that's kind of cute in those days. And the money wasn't too good, but there was a lot of laughs, I guess. There was a lot of bumps and bruises, and the guys, the old timers would, uh, Get a roast and put it in the engine, and it would cook on halfway to the town, you know, from the heat of the that. engine. Yeah, in the Bobby Heenan book, you talked about uh, making a roast by the time you got to the show. Yeah. It was cooked and it was all stuff, yeah. Wow. I don't know if that's too well, healthy. I got my goose cooked a few times, too, so <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. And then, uh, you know, we had our legion of fans, you know, a lot of... A lot of girls would follow the guys around. A lot of the guys would follow the guys around. Uh, but uh, it was funny. Every, every city and every territory that I went to, of which in Tennessee and these other places... We really had, uh, not, I guess that's blind ambition. You know, you're a young up-and-coming wrestler. You don't know any better. So somebody says, how do you get a break? How many years of apprenticeship did you put in? I put in plenty. And that's why when I, I got a break and I was lucky enough to get a break, I kind of felt I deserved it. So, uh, 
I mm. did feel wrestling the first WrestleMania, not wrestling, but managing oh. and getting involved with Bruno and that, well, that whole thing. First with WrestleMania was with Cindy Lauper was there and Billy Martin, the late Billy Martin, you know, the and Rocky. Rocky was there and Muhammad Ali and all these and that. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're there and getting to know them a little bit, you know, for right, a few you, hours. You worked with Bruno. And yeah, match. him and his son. It was Beefcake. I managed Beefcake. And then, of course, he was there with his son, David. And uh, yeah, it was kind of interesting. In fact, it was big leagues, man. We didn't even know how big wrestling was uh, ever going to be, but that was the first one. I, I did WrestleMania one, two, and three. The next one was with those uh, the Battle Royal they had up in Chicago. I was there with Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy Osbourne was in the corner of the uh, British Bulldogs, and I was in the corner with uh, uh, Bravo and uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Up in, uh, and we had a 96,000. Uh, in attendance up at the uh, Silverdome. Silverdome, Pontiac Silverdome. That's correct. Yeah. Now, Six. do you attend all of the WWE's projects? Um, well, not back then. I didn't. No, but, but now it, you but did. In the '90s, definitely. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And today, yeah, I still go around. Not everywhere, but I go around. Now you're yeah. wrestling some of the. I mean, you're managing some of the wrestlers, right? I believe. Yeah. Uh -huh. that, that Johnny fought with. Well, let me tell you something. People like uh, Johnny and, and Jimmy Hart and these. They, for me, were my role models. Right. So I totally enjoyed watching, watching them. And Johnny has something he's going to show everybody. As a but, matter of fact. But Johnny was so good, but they ad libbed, and today they don't ad lib. Right. And back then it was a think on your feet and just do what you have to do in thirty seconds, promote the town and do it. There's a picture Look. I brought. Wow. Oh wow. Of myself here, unless just Johnny Valiant with uh, Lou Albano, and Jimmy Valiant right here. Oh, that's a great picture. Yeah. There it is, the Valiant Brothers, okay? Another little thing that I brought here with me is my old a nemesis, an old partner there, is, uh, we're talking about him, Beefcake. Beefcake, oh, the women <laughs> loved him. He was so good looking, but he always played that, like, dumb yeah. role, you know? He <laughs> maybe, he, maybe he wasn't playing. Something like I'm doing now. <laughs> and then what here's old Luscious Johnny, back in the day. Did right you prefer here. being a wrestler over a manager? Uh, that's a good question. Um, they both had their challenges, but uh, I was always kind of a loquacious kind of guy, and I could kind of, they say, pretty good talker, but uh, I probably combined that as a, as a wrestler and a talker by being, you know, as a, as a manager of sorts, but uh, actually a manager is probably my favorite, preceded maybe by doing color commentary, which I, I like to do You were well. so good. That's what I like to do. So good. Now, Evan, you also have, uh, besides being the associate producer of uh, The Wrestler, you also have a documentary, uh, The Teresa Serio Story, correct? That's How's correct. that going? Uh, great. We just came back from England where we uh, had several shows, several screenings, and uh, it's at Teresa Serio. Uh, the website is aliveagainmovie.com, and right. Teresa lost her leg to an impaired driver. And um, she talks to the wounded warriors, and it, it's quite a story. And um, Gary Sinise is in it, Lanny the Genius Papo's in it, and other luminaries. And I also am involved with an upcoming film called Ring of Angels, and uh, I'm going to be the producer on that. And you can check that out on Facebook. We saw our friend Jose Hernandez. That's right. He's going to be in there. From Oz. From, from Oz, Oz, yeah. yeah, yeah that's great. Actor. We're going to get him. We just we had him on our radio show. Oh, we're going to get him great. here. Yeah. I saw him last week. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. yeah. Where did you see him? Yeah. Uh, he was at the, the WrestleMania. Oh, at WrestleMania. Now, Paul, have you been to WrestleMania? I mean, you were there every year as a child. Have you I been recently? The first one. Um, the last one was great. Um, you know, things have changed a lot. I actually have the doll. Of the, of the Luscious Johnny Valley yeah. doll. No, it came with the Beefcake and Valentine. Yeah. AKA, you know, the three dream team. And it was amazing back then. You know, 68,000 people to 90,000 people is a whole different experience. Sometimes, to me, I'd rather watch it on TV. I mean, just, you know, just the, the intimacy level. I mean, to be in a crowd, sometimes you get, you know, an overly smart crowd, sure. you know, and, 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 you, and you just don't enjoy it as much. And uh, the, the, the Hall of Fame ceremony, I think, should be done in a little bit more of an intimate setting because you get a lot of people that are as um, a little bit obnoxious to people that mm -hmm. you know that, that deserve a little bit more time to speak and, and stuff and I don't know if you were there this year but uh, you know no, so but I, uh, I, I agree with you I like I say I was inducted in 1996 in the Hall of Fame along with uh, my old partner Jimmy Valiant Snuka uh, Killer Kowalski uh, in fact Vince's McMahon's father was inducted that's Johnny Rods yeah. uh, Chief J uh, uh, monsoon 
And, you know, uh, in retrospect, you know, kind of looking back at a lot of this, uh, yeah, a lot of these fellas are deceased. Um, you know, you get on that slamwrestling.com and you look at the obits and whatnot and you see all these fellas. And, boy, for me, it's, uh, it's really something when I look at the guys I used to wrestle with, travel with. You know, I'm, I'm asking myself, what am I still doing here? You know, uh, we're all born to die, you know that, but I still I have a lot of living to do. Although I'm dying right now, you know, but if, <laughs> I do have to take my hat off to you for appreciating what I did and for the Hall of Fame. And I do kind of agree with you. It should be more of an intimate type thing. You know, it's funny. There's some people in life, you know, you go to the Steeler game or the Jet game or whatnot. They figure, you know, the more beer you consume, the more booze. Hey, I paid my money. I can do what I want. But, you know, in, in, in reality... You know, there's a lot of people that don't subscribe to that thought. There's a lot of people that want to say what they want, when they want to say it, and they, they could care less. Now, Bob Backlund was inducted in the Hall of Fame, and I've wrestled this guy a lot. Mm -hmm. This guy is a tremendous wrestler. This guy, you talk about being in shape. I'll tell you a story. I was in Omaha, Nebraska, in the AWA. I was managing Hogan up there in the AWA and uh, before he left there and came in for McMahon. But there was, Harley Race was wrestling a guy, and I'm saying, who is this guy that Harley Race is wrestling? It was like the fourth match in Omaha, Nebraska, a redheaded guy, and I said, this guy is all terrific. And it was Bob Backlund. And, and, and they said he's prepping to go into the East Coast, and he's so going to be his way, and don't be surprised, he's not going to be a world champion. Well, Bob Backlund was a world champion, and I can tell you something, the guy knows what he's doing, is he, can he get out there and compete with Johnny Luscious, Johnny Valiant as far as a mouthpiece? The answer is no. But in the <laughs> ring, could I do what he does? The answer is no. Mm -hmm. So, but I think you pay people to, you pay to see people that can do it. And Bob Backlund could do it. Yeah. And just like New York's Joe Namath could do it and um, other athletes that can do it, uh, Bob Backlund could do it. San Martino, he could do it, okay? But people would pay to see more for San Martino than they would Bob Backlund. Consequently, okay. Yeah. That doesn't mean he's a better uh, one thing or another. But as far as the promoter, as far as the promoter, okay, it's off. <laughs> yeah, the hour, all. the show is over. Oh, Life alert. My, my, time to take your my, my Chinese wife. At the time, I guess the <laughs> wash is done. Uh, okay. I'm in sorry. Closing. In closing, I, I, I want to ask you: Have you had? Uh, everybody has regrets in life. Have you had any uh, in regards to wrestling? None at all. No, I. Uh, I listened, that same question was to, they asked Mike Gitka one time, but what's the best thing that ever happened to you in your life? And he says, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> so I feel that I have things to Perfect. do in my great life answer. that I'm going to do. That's a great yeah. answer. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all too. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. We had Poi Cigars. Time went quick. Yeah. <laughs> Poi Cigars owns La Casa Grande Cigars on Arthur Avenue in the Bronx. If you're ever on Arthur Avenue in the Little Italy section, Stop by the Arthur Avenue Market, go visit Poi Cigars, and watch them hand roll all those cars, cigars at La Casa Grande Cigars. Thank you, Evan Ginsberg, My the pleasure. associate producer of the movie Wrestler, of the movie The Wrestler, Wrestler, which featured Mickey Rourke. He also has a radio show on legendsradio.net. That's I right. Wednesday, Leg Wednesday, 7 p.m. Wednesdays at 7 p.m., so tune in. Luscious Johnny Valiant, Hall of Famer WWE, who's now doing comedy and Greatest things in life are about to happen to him. So stay tuned to follow Luscious Johnny on all his new endeavors. And we have Bobby right now, my favorite man. <laughs> Bobby right now is the pastor at my favorite church, man. Sound of Heaven. You can find Sound of Heaven, 30 Eastern Avenue in Deer Park, the best and the coolest Christians you will ever meet. Bobby's also <laughs> the agent to the stars. And we have my co-host, Christina Melendez. We have Melendez. a big show coming up this week, uh, Judy Torres. We have Judy Torres Judy on Torres. Wednesday, on, on the radio. On the radio. On the radio. Uh, we'll be live here, but on the radio. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, Ustream, simulcast. Yes, yeah. we'll be That's watching always it. Fun. Yes. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Again, much love to all. I love you all, and thank you for following us and hanging out. Have a good day. Thank you. Like by the United Nations over here. <laughs>